it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. What's up, guys? My name is Brendan, and the trick of the week this week is the cork. Today, I'll be going over my five favorite cork variations. After that, I'll be showing you a progression for learning the cork. And finally, my three best tips if you want to master the skill and perfect your cork. So with that said, let's get started. First, I wanna start by going over my five favorite cork variations. You see, the cork is an amazing trick because it can be done in so many different ways. Throughout the sport of tricking, athletes will perform the cork, but do a variation by adding their own style or another element of tricking, like a kick or an additional twist. Variations are one of my favorite parts of tricking, so here are my five favorite cork variations. Cork variation number one, the icy cork. To do an icy cork, you just do a cork with pointed toes and very clean lines. The icy cork was popularized by Micah Carnes, and it's one of my favorite variations. The biggest way you can tell it's an icy cork is if you see that figure four within the legs, where the left leg is chambered and the swing leg lines up along the athlete's twisting axis. Those are the things that make it an icy cork, and it is one of my favorite variations. Variation number two is the rodeo cork. To do a rodeo cork, you swing up just like a normal cork, but the second you leave the ground, you tuck in your swing leg to grab at the ankle. Then when you open up to your twisting position, you open up into a nice big rodeo, showcasing an arched upper body and a nice strong grab on your swing leg. The rodeo is one of my favorite variations because it has no martial value whatsoever. It is just incredibly stylistic. Variation number three is the cork round. To do a cork round, you just execute a massive round kick using your swing leg. This trick is pretty easy to understand because the technique is very similar to the base cork. The only big difference is you open up your upper body a little bit sooner and you strike at a target the same target that you would kick if you were to do a tornado kick or any other round kick variation. Cork variation number four is the cork double leg. To do a cork double leg, you set just like you would a normal cork, but once you move into the twisting position, you tense at the core and you bring your legs up into a piked position. The cork double leg is an excellent variation because you have that nice big open body position that's very unique and distinctly different from the normal twisting position that you would be in while doing a normal cork. That's why the cork D leg is one of my favorite variations, along with all other double leg variations. My fifth and final favorite cork variation is the cork shuriken. To do a cork shuriken, you swing up just like a normal cork, but you twist early. And then once you spot your target, you open up your legs and you open up your body to execute a massive inside out crescent kick. The thing I like about the shuriken cork is you have this giant open body position because you stall your twist by opening up your upper body and separating your legs. Not only that, but the cork shuriken is a great trick to use on a target. And it looks incredibly good when it's done well. Next, I wanna take you through a progression for learning the cork. And we're gonna start this by taking it all the way back. With the first backwards flipping skill, I recommend athletes learn, and that is the makako. To do a makako, you just squat down, put one 
hand behind you for support, jump in an arch position, and then you just kick your legs over. If you get really comfortable with the makako, you're able to build your awareness to the point where you're able to attempt the swing makako. The swing makako is just like the makako, but instead of starting in that squatting position, you start in an eagle. You go into the eagle and then you swing your legs and your arms behind you as you spot your landing and reach over to exit just like the makako. The big difference between the makako and the swing makako is that swing setup. And the better you can get at the swing by training low impact skills like the swing makako, the more that will directly translate over to your core. After the swing makako, you're going to be doing a touchdown gainer. The touchdown gainer is just like the swing makako, except you only use one hand. You use the hand opposite of your swing leg. The thing that's nice about going from the swing makako to the touchdown gainer is you always have an extra hand if you need a little bit more support. If you follow the makako, swing makako, to the touchdown gainer, the entire progression can be very gentle and spread out over many sessions. Once you get extremely comfortable with the touchdown gainer, what I would recommend is you remove your hands entirely and you perfect the cheat gainer. The cheat gainer is extremely important on the progression to the cork. That's because your swing for the cheat gainer is the same swing you're going to have when you do your cork. And if you can get good flip and good control when executing the cheat gainer, that control and flip will go up the progression chain to be the same control that you get when you do the cork. The better your cheat gainer is, the easier it will be to finally progress to the cork. The next step when learning the cork is to do a cheat gainer with a late twist or a gainer Arabian. What I would recommend is complete the cheat gainer setup, but once you leave the ground, practice your twist by looking towards your twisting side, bringing your arms towards your twisting shoulder, and bringing your legs together. Now at first, what you're gonna wanna do is do this very gently, only turning maybe 45 to 90 degrees. But what I would recommend is you slowly but surely add on more twists until you're able to complete the full rotation. And as you do this, what I would recommend is to not do it as much of a late twist, but to slowly progress to the point where you're able to twist at the apex of your skill with the same timing that you would use for the cork. By training the gainer late twist, it's also a very slow and methodical progression that improves your kinesthetic awareness. Finally, once your cheat gainer late twist becomes extremely consistent, you can progress to doing the cork. The only difference between the cheat gainer late twist and the cork is in the timing of the twist. To do the cork, you just twist a little bit earlier, trying to spin at the apex of your flip when you're highest off the ground. Then from there, you just end in that same eagle position you started. When you do a cheat gainer late twist, often you're landing on both feet, slowly but surely twisting your body around. But to do a good cork, you need to open up at the end and land in the same eagle position you started. But that's the progression that I would recommend if you want to learn the cork. This progression is nice, long, and gentle, and it starts with some very fundamental low impact tricks like the makako and the swing makako. By building on those in a slow progressive manner, you're able to learn risky skills like the cork far safer than if you just said YOLO and threw your body. Keep in mind, this is not the only way to learn the cork. When learning a new skill, there is no wrong way to go about it. This progression is what I would recommend to most athletes because it is slow, gentle, and extremely safe. It mitigates most of the risk. But there are many other tutorials out there for the cork. 
what I would recommend if you're really struggling with this trick is go out there into the world and learn everything you can about this skill. Not only that, but this isn't the first cork tutorial I've made. If you want a slightly different perspective, then just go back and watch my previous videos. If you are struggling to learn the cork, I'd like to extend a helping hand. Join my training community on Patreon. There, you're able to message me personally, showing me clips of your cork, and I'm able to give you the best tips I can. So that way, we're able to work on an individual basis to help you along your tricking journey. Guys, the lowest you can donate is $10 a month, and it would all mean the world to me. Please go check it out on Patreon. But with that said, let me give you some tips on how you can improve your cork. Tip number one, be patient as you said. The most common issue that I see when people are learning the cork is they rush the twist. What I mean by that is they don't complete their cheat gainer set before they pull in their arms and bring their legs together to spin them around. If you pull your legs together before you execute a swing, you're not gonna have the flip you need. So what I would strongly recommend is be patient and focus on that cheat gainer set before you wrap in that twist. Tip number two, focus on joint stacking as you're performing the swing. What I mean by joint stacking is stacking your joints right on top of each other so that way you can be strong and stable while performing your set. When you're in the eagle and swinging to generate momentum for your cork, your ankle should be right below your knee. Your knee should be right above your ankle with a slight bend to it. Your hips should be above that and after that you can go to your shoulder and then head. If you can make a nice stacked line as you're performing your swing, you're going to be a lot more effective than if you were arched in your back or weak in your hips. If you can be strong and stable and have a nice structure to your body, all of your tricks will be far easier. Tip number three, as you perform the swing to generate flipping momentum for your cork, swing your arms and swing leg in tandem with one another. If your timing is off, the cork is going to struggle. What I mean by that is if your arms go before your leg, you're not gonna have as clean of a set or as much power as if they all win at the same time. Same goes as if your leg goes before your arms. You want your whole body to work together when performing this skill. You don't want your arms and legs to be working against each other. You want everything to help out and move towards the same goal. Thank you guys so much for watching and a special thank you to all the patrons out there supporting Mastering Tricking. You see, this project is funded in part by donations from athletes within the community who want to train with me and with other trickers out there who are just passionate about this sport. I would love to have you as part of the Mastering Tricking community. So please go to my Patreon, check it out, and maybe even sign up. But you can also go to howtomastertricking.com and access a ton of free educational tricking material. Thank you guys again and have a lovely day.